Bolovinaka and welcome to Talk Business. And a big hello as well to our viewers across the region receiving us through Sky Pacific. On the show tonight, we talk to former High Court Judge Nazat Shamim about corporate liability in Fiji. And we take a look at a gadget that is doing wonders around the world, the portable sawmill. But first up, last week saw the Certified Practicing Accountants, or CPA, hold their annual congress in Denarau. With a membership base of more than 132,000 professionals in more than 110 countries around the globe, CPA is one of the largest, most recognized and respected accounting bodies in the world. The Congress was an opportunistic platform for members and stakeholders to discuss issues of concern to the accounting fraternity, but none gathering immense interest is the issue of the country's corporate liability and proposed corporations law. Take this honor to bestow upon you. It is now accepted that the Fiji Companies Act does very little to hold companies accountable and there is very little guidance for company directors and officers in Fiji. With the new corporations decree, this is likely to change. The basis of which is to create a new kind of criminal liability premised on ways that companies behave as opposed to individuals. Traditionally, companies could not commit criminal offenses and they could only be taken to task if the directing minds of the organization were directly involved. Companies were seen to be um, a persona which was incapable of committing criminal offenses. This was because criminal offenses had to have an act and an intent. And it was a real challenge for the criminal law to work out with when a company acted, firstly, and secondly, what was the intention of a company? Whose guilty mind is the guilty mind of a company? So that was a real challenge. The common law said that a company was only guilty of a criminal offence if the guilty act was done by the directing mind of the company and if the intention was the intention of the directing mind of the company, which meant that basically only the acts of very senior management were seen to be the acts of the company. That was under the common law. The law has over time evolved and this is because the public has demanded more accountability. There have been so many disasters as a result of engineering fault or bad management on behalf of the companies that increasingly the public has demanded greater accountability for companies. So then legislators had to ask what the criminal law is all about. Can we bring companies into the criminal law or is the criminal law only about the conduct of individuals? And all over the world, the conclusion has been reached. The criminal law is ultimately about denunciation, which means the public morally says this conduct is wrong and therefore we must denounce it. Secondly, it's about deterrence. So if you prosecute one company, all the other companies start to pull their socks up. Thirdly, it's about rehabilitation so that you work on helping companies to improve themselves. And lastly, it's about punishment. Somebody's done something wrong and they should be punished for it. When we hear the names of organizations, in most cases, a thought of some sort comes to mind, whether it be excellent customer service or long queues or just the extra long tea breaks. This is because each company has a culture that is unique to it. And that culture, in many cases, molds an employee. And if because the company fails to direct the employee to do his or her obligatory duty, then the company may be held liable. For because the way that companies are behaving has changed in the last 50 years or so, increasingly legislators have realized that companies have their own individual personality, that they are capable of making moral decisions, and that they are capable of punishment. And so therefore, increasingly all over the world, the acts of companies which break the criminal law have been increasingly criminalized. There are now only a few countries in the world which say that companies not, can't commit criminal offences at all. In fact, most common law countries do punish companies for criminal behaviour. And Fiji's decided not to go that way, obviously. Instead, Fiji's decided to go the Australian way. And the provisions in the Crimes Decree about corporate criminal liability are identical to the provisions in the Australian Criminal Code. And that is based on the idea that all companies have their own corporate culture, and that in order to decide whether a com company is guilty of a criminal offence or not, and that's any, rape, murder, perjury, anything, anything in the crimes decree now can be committed by a company as well as an individual. In order to decide whether a company is guilty of an offence, the courts are going to look at the corporate culture of that particular company. So they're going to ask, in assessing whether or not a company has a particular fault element, they're going to ask, what's your corporate culture? 
And in assessing what is a corporate culture, they're going to look at the practices, the attitudes, and the rules of the company to decide whether the company it has decided it's going to comply with the law or not. It is clear now that companies need to start taking responsibility over staff members and need to be more vigilant concerning the law. In relation to assessing whether or not a company is negligent, it can look at the aggregate behavior of its employees. For instance, you take a bank. A bank teller may have been negligent in issuing a particular document, but not so negligent as to fall within the provisions of the Prime's decree, not grossly negligent. However, another employee in another part of the bank, and then another and another, are all negligent to a certain extent. It might be minuscule, but accumulatively, all the negligence becomes the negligence of the bank. And the Crimes Decree allows for that kind of aggregate negligence. Again, it's taken um, in, in its entirety from the provisions of the Australian Criminal Code Act, which means that you can aggregate the behavior of the employees to assess whether the organization is negligent. So two main areas. One is looking at the corporate culture, and another one is looking at negligence. In looking at negligence, you can look at the aggregate behavior of the employees, but you can also look at the way the company is supervising and managing its staff. You can also look at the way the company is supervising and managing its staff, whether it has adequate systems of corporate management, and you can also look at whether the company is giving relevant information to relevant people. So for instance, if you've got cleaning ladies cleaning the floor, they don't put out the yellow sign to say, caution, wet floor. And is it because the company hasn't told them to do it? And if the company hasn't told them to do it and is not supervising them, then the company is negligent. And if somebody slips on the wet floor and dies, the company can also be prosecuted for manslaughter by gross, gross negligence. Because they didn't tell their cleaning ladies that that's what they have to do, and then they didn't supervise them. So it's quite a rigorous um, regime for companies. If they want to be compliant with the law, firstly, they need to know the law. They need to know what's in the Crimes Decree. Secondly, they need to know that it's not enough to put it in your corporate policy, that this is what we believe in. Now company boards and senior management have a duty to inform their staff and there is a lot on their plates. But the issue is not the post you hold, but the duties you are asked to do. I think boards of directors have to take a leadership position because I think corporate governance and good governance ultimately is board responsibility. Having said that, if the board says to the CEO, we want you now to have this policy, and the CEO doesn't do it, then the relationship between the board of directors and the CEO becomes a problematic area. Because under the Crimes Decree, the company is bound by the acts of the CEO, who is the high managerial agent, unless the board has exercised due diligence to control the CEO. So you can't have a runaway CEO that's on a frolic of his own or her own. There now needs to be a basis of a relationship between the board of directors and the um, CEO, which is based on due diligence.